purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at onpurposely.com. Oh, I read something so beautiful this morning, and I can't wait to share it with you because it reminds me of what you and I do on the Bible for Busy People. By the way, hi, I'm Erica, your host. So glad you're here. And particularly this week, because we are busting up another myth together, the one that says, Bible stories are confusing. Actually, Jesus is so clear, isn't he, about his love and his care and concern for us in the scripture. So let me share these words that I read this morning from a man named Robert Murray McShane. When you are reading a book, in a dark room and come to a difficult part, you take it to a window to get more light. So take your Bibles to Christ. That's what we're doing. We're bringing our Bibles to Christ right now together. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior who is mighty to save. And we give you these next few minutes. Lord, we also give you our lives Lord, I pray that you would illuminate our hearts and open our eyes to what you want us to see and understand right now as we spend time in your word, breaking open the bread of life. Bless our time together, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, today we're going to be diving into another incredible story that Jesus told. Very clear story, but I want to share two things before we dive into this pool that is crystal clear by the way. Number one, we get to explore something that I absolutely love about Jesus. We're going to hear a man ask him a question, and he's going to answer with a story. (laughs) And being an Italian, I come from a whole family of storytellers. That appeals to me so much. Number two, this is the only other thing I want you to know going into this story. The Jewish people and the Samaritan people hated each other. They despised each other. So keep that in mind as we dive in right now to Luke chapter 10, beginning in verse 25. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along. And when he saw the man, by the way, remember, this was a Jew and they hated each other. He felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Full disclosure here. I just stopped recording for a few moments because I really do believe I know what I'm supposed to share with you right now. You and I understand this story. Jesus is being very clear. He wants us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Even if we hate someone, he wants us to show them love. But there's something in this story that I'm not really sure I've ever noticed before. If we go back to the beginning of this beautiful passage in scripture, where Jesus is interacting with this expert in religious law, 
And when the expert says, what should I do? How can I live forever? And of course, Jesus says, well, what does the law of Moses say? And the man answers, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Those verses are so intimately connected. When you and I love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength and all our mind, I believe He gives us the ability to love people we can't stand, to bandage the wound of an enemy. You know, this is what Jesus did for us. He came, He died for us when we were sinners, not when we were all wonderful and sweet and loving, but when we were unlovable. I want to read a little bit of Paul's letter to the Romans with you right now. Chapter 5, join me in verse 8. But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of His Son while we were still His enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of His Son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. In this story you and I read together today, the Jew and the Samaritan were enemies, but the Samaritan still showed kindness and mercy and love toward the Jew. The Jew was helpless in the situation, wounded by someone cruel, and that's us when we're in our sin. But Jesus is like the good Samaritan who came on a rescue mission to save us. He showed us his love while we were yet in our sin, in the gutter of our mistakes and poor decisions. He came to us there. That's where he found us. That's where we became friends. Oh, I'm so touched by that thought. Until next time, you are really loved. Thank you for making time for the Bible for Busy People today. If being part of this community is a blessing to you, it's super easy to share this podcast with someone you love. We're all about spreading the hope of Jesus like butter. So if you've got a moment to write a review, boy, we'd really appreciate that. Maybe you need a little prayer today or you're ready to take that next step with God. I invite you to check out our show notes. You're going to find lots of encouragement there. This podcast is one branch on a tree called Called Purposely, a podcast network designed with practical podcasts to help you find and thrive in God's purpose for your life. If you've got a pulse, you've got a purpose.